Hey everyone, Fintech here. And in this video, I'm going to go over which crypto project, Solana, Terra with their dual Luna and UST tokens, or Ethereum 2.0 is the best. I'm going to compare them using three separate categories, the speed and scalability of the network, the likelihood of the network to grow from where it is today and to reach its future goals, and the unique value and features each crypto provides that other cryptos don't. My goal is that by the end of this video, you'll have a clear picture of the benefits and drawbacks of each crypto and under understand which projects have the potential to take over the world and what is just hype. So hit the like button if you want, and let's start with a brief overview of each crypto, starting with Ethereum 2. Now right off the bat, I know the name Ethereum 2 isn't really used anymore officially, but I like the name because it shows how far the project has come since it first launched as Ethereum way back in 2013. Now Ethereum was first conceived by programmer Vitalik Buterin and finally launched in 2015 after being built by a team of developers. And its immediate impact is hard to overstate. It soon grew to become the second largest crypto by market cap and ground zero for all kinds of new innovations, such as smart contracts and NFTs. But since then, the team has been actively working on fixing all the issues associated with Ethereum and pretty much all older blockchains in general, that they are too slow, too inefficient, and too limiting. Which is a good point to start Start looking at our first comparison category, speed, because while Ethereum is not very fast today, there are improvements in the pipeline that will literally 3000x its transaction speed. So to understand these coming changes, let's first take a step back to the start of blockchains in general. The first ever cryptocurrency was Bitcoin. It launched way back in 2009 when Satoshi Nakamoto minted block zero on the chain, and it allowed people to trade coins in a decentralized fashion. This was groundbreaking at the time for its small community since it meant you could have commerce without needing a central bank or organization to control everything. Sort of like when you used to trade snacks during lunch at school and the teachers didn't like it, but they couldn't really stop it. But as the network grew, it became clear that it was very slow, inefficient, and limited in its uses. Ethereum Ethereum was the next step six years later and was an order of magnitude more useful than Bitcoin. In addition to having the Ether token for transactions, it added the ability to create smart contracts, paving the way for next generation blockchain tools that are built on top of the Ethereum network, including NFTs and other decentralized apps or dApps, ranging from games to collectibles. It's also how Logan Paul made half a million dollars in profit selling an NFT to a metaverse gaming company. And you know what? No part of that sentence would have made any sense 10 years ago. But Ethereum still has its own issues, questionable NFT economics aside. It's still relatively slow, only processing 30 transactions per second. It still uses a proof of work model, meaning to mine Ether, you need to use a lot of high powered GPU farms that use up tons of electricity. And you're always restricted to the rules of the Ethereum chain. And from the beginning, Ethereum's founders have been aware of these limitations and the community has been working on trying to fix them and create a new and improved chain that would solve all these issues, which was supposed to be called Ethereum 2. But it's been nearly seven years since then and improvements have rolled out so slowly that they've completely dropped the Ethereum 2 name and just call it Ethereum upgrades. And while Ethereum has been struggling to push through improvements, many competitors have cropped up that have managed to build massive communities of their own. Solana and Terra are just two examples examples of blockchains that decided to throw out the old Ethereum way of doing things and just build their own chains from scratch. Solana, for example, uses an innovative proof of history model to greatly improve transaction speeds, allowing them to theoretically support speeds up to 710,000 transactions per second once hardware improves. Though for now, they are only running at 2,500 transactions per second. We can compare that to Ethereum, which only runs at 30 transactions per second, or Bitcoin's five transactions per second, which it absolutely blows out of the water. In fact, Solana is now running at nearly double the speed that they were running when I made a previous video comparing them to Polkadot and Ethereum. So things are not slowing down there. Terra, meanwhile, is actually built on top of Cosmos Tendermint, which gives it transaction speeds up to 10,000 transactions per second. Though Terra hasn't yet hit a scale where they would need more than around 1,000 transactions per second. Now, yes, that is quite a bit slower than Solana, but with Terra, you also don't have to worry as much about transaction times, since the price of UST token doesn't fluctuate moment to moment like other cryptos does. But we'll talk about that in a later category. But let's also not count out Ethereum here. While they still run at the speed of a three-legged cow and they need to validate transactions using a cumbersome proof of work model, they have a parallel beacon version of Ethereum running called Ethereum 2, which is not the same thing at all as the upgrades that they had planned to call Ethereum 2. I know, it's not confusing at all. But all that chain is, is a version of Ethereum that uses proof of stake rather than proof of work. And 
people argue about the benefits and disadvantages of this, and we'll touch on that in a second, but what's important here is it unlocks Ethereum's potential speed. The Beacon Ethereum 2 chain is slated to merge with the main Ethereum chain within the next few months, supposedly in Q3 2022. Though that date keeps getting pushed back, so who knows for sure when it's actually going to happen. Sometime after that, they plan to introduce sharding, that's sharding with a D, after which Ethereum will support up to 100,000 transactions per second. So these speeds, up to 710,000 TPS for Solana, 10,000 for Terra, should effectively solve any bottlenecks for a very long time down the road. After all, Solana is already one of the top 10 largest cryptos by market cap, and they only need around 2,500 transactions per second. So even Terra has room to grow. But compare that to say the Visa credit card network, which only handles 1,700 transactions per second with a potential of around 24,000 TPS. And we start to see how big some of these chains are starting to become. So now let's rank these cryptos in terms of speed. Solana is obviously first place. It's faster today and it has a max higher speed than the others. But for second place, I'm actually going to put Terra. Even though it only handles a maximum of 10,000 transactions per second versus Ethereum's potential 100,000 transactions per second. And that's just because Terra can handle that load today while Ethereum won't reach those speeds at least until next year. And that's assuming they don't see another delay like they usually do. In the meantime, Ethereum's puttering along at a measly 30 transactions per second, which I think is enough to drop them to third place in terms of speed at scale. But as slow people will tell you, speed isn't everything. And a huge factor in how important transaction speed is, is how big the network will even end up being. After all, you don't need to process a million transactions per second if you never reach that sort of user base scale. Which leads us into the second category of future growth, which I think of as in the ideal future for each crypto. How big will their network be and how likely are they to achieve that future based on what we know today? Well, Ethereum's already massive, but it could get even bigger and maybe even past Bitcoin. Solana has plenty of room to grow if it hopes to compete with Ethereum's market cap. And then there's Terra, which is currently the smallest of these cryptos just behind Solana. Terra bills itself as programmable money for the internet, which is super buzzwordy. A better way to describe Terra is that it's both a stable coin and an algorithmically paired investable crypto token. UST is Terra's stable coin, which is always worth exactly $1. But unlike most stable coins, which keep their price fixed by keeping $1 in reserves for every coin in circulation, UST keeps the price stable by changing the supply of the coin up or down as the volume flows in and out of the project. It does this using its other crypto token, Luna, which acts more like a traditional crypto like Solana or Ethereum. Luna token is automatically traded into UST when there needs to be more supply, and UST goes into Luna when they need to lower the supply. Thus, the price of UST is kept stable while the price of Luna can fluctuate up and down. This somewhat unique combination is interesting because Terra's dual community of UST and Luna are separate, but also very closely intertwined. So as the use of cryptos in general grows and more people look to stable coins to keep their money readily accessible, that will also grow the market cap of UST. But at the same time, since Luna is always trying to stabilize UST, UST growing can also grow the market cap of Luna. So it's like a reinforcing cycle as each of these community grows. Of course, the opposite can also be true. And this has historically been the problem with algorithmic stable coins. As people start to pull money out of one of the communities, the liquidity can start to disappear and the network can end up burning itself out trying to pay incentives to keep the system moving, causing everything to eventually fall to zero. That's exactly what happened with Titan and Iron Finance in the summer of 2021, which was a high profile algorithmic stablecoin as well. Luckily, Luna and UST operate somewhat differently from Titan, something its founders Dil Kwan and Daniel Shin made sure of. See, Luna itself acts as its own independent ecosystem. So its sole purpose is not just to keep UST prices up because that would be a pyramid scheme. Instead, Luna itself serves a purpose. Now, every crypto at some level is valuable because people believe it has value, but this tends to work out better for cryptos like Ethereum that have a strong reason for existing due to their ecosystem of dApps. And Terra is similar. For example, there's Terra's value as a payments processor. Anytime you make a transaction that isn't in cash, some Someone is paying a fee for that. If you use a credit card like Visa or MasterCard, those companies charge two to 3% to merchants to process every transaction. Similarly, if you wanna transfer crypto to someone else's wallet or mint an NFT on Ethereum, you'll need to pay gas fees for the transfer. That's why it ended up costing me nearly $75 to mint my own NFT, making fun of Jack Dorsey's NFT. But Terra cuts these fees dramatically with a maximum processing fee of 1% and sometimes you'll pay as little as 0.1%. So for 
anything that can be processed on Terra, which by the way, can connect to other chains like Ethereum, most people are going to save a ton of money performing their actual transactions using Terra's network. And that's just in the US. Outside the US, Terra has a stablecoin for the Korean won called KRT and a stablecoin for the Euro called EUT. And in Korea, you can also use a service called Chai where you can enter your bank information just like Apple Pay or PayPal, but then pay using the Terra network at merchants. So I could buy a donut using UST like it was cash in a checking account. Yeah, uh, I only eat pink sprinkled donuts, but I always pay in crypto so no one knows. Good for you, sir. Good for you. All these useful DeFi or decentralized finance features, payments processing, cross-chain compatibility, the ability to borrow and lend, the built-in stable coins, have all led to Terra's Luna token actually passing Ethereum as the second most staked crypto in the world. The number one most staked crypto is Solana. So how do we rank all these tokens in terms of future growth? Well, market cap puts Ethereum at the largest, but in terms of staking, it's the smallest. Luna has the smallest market cap, but if you add in UST, Terra overall is actually the second largest ahead of Solana. But then again, Solana's wormhole technology is what powers the interoperability of all these tokens in the first place. So I think in terms of future growth potential, Ethereum will have the biggest growth long-term. Maybe not as a percentage, but in raw numbers. Ethereum is still the only crypto that has a decent chance of passing Bitcoin one day, and while it's slow and cumbersome to improve, it's also stable, which is something people value in the incredibly volatile crypto space. The same can't be said for Solana, which went offline for six hours in December 2020 due to a bug, and then went offline again in September 2021 due to high traffic. Or Terra, which still struggles with the reputation of algorithmic stablecoins caused by high profile crashes in similar past projects. So number two, I'm going to put Solana, because I know Solana is going to be a success at some level. When FTX, one of the largest crypto exchanges in the world, looked to create a decentralized exchange where people could trade crypto derivatives or swap assets across blockchains, they ultimately decided to use Solana over Ethereum as the base chain for the application. And like I mentioned earlier, Terra also uses tools built on Solana, which I think justifies them grabbing the number two spot. And then rounding out number three is Terra, which I do think has a lot of potential future growth, but unlike these other two cryptos, I don't don't think its success is quite as guaranteed. But I can make all the predictions I want about the future. Sometimes what's going to determine a crypto success is what unique benefits and features it provides that other crypto projects don't. So let's get into what I think is the most interesting category of all, unique features or in the case of these cryptos, unique combinations of features. Everything Ethereum does, NFTs, smart contracts, DeFi, it's all been replicated by other chains at this point. The really unique part is Ethereum's ability to do them at its scale, as well as Ethereum's sort of brand recognition from how long they've been out there, which you know is valuable since even some enterprises have started using them. Terra, meanwhile, combines two different concepts, a useful DeFi token in Luna, as well as an algorithmic stablecoin, UST. Both both the concepts have been done separately, but putting them together hasn't been done at their scale before. And ultimately that may make the difference that makes Terra the number one stablecoin someday. Then there's Solana, which of all these coins has probably the most differentiated feature, which is core to how the token itself operates. It's proof of history model. Now proof of history is sometimes mistaken for a consensus mechanism like proof of work or proof of stake, but it's actually completely separate. Proof of work powers blockchains like Bitcoin and ensures that no one miner can ever fake a transaction on the network, since they would need to control a majority of the computing power on the network to do so. Proof of stake is similar, except it uses ownership of a token to validate transactions. So you would need to own 51% of all the tokens to fake transactions. Ethereum 2, Solana, and Luna all run using proof of stake. Proof of history, on the other hand, is a technique Solana uses to achieve never before seen speeds on its network. See, a normal blockchain works by making sure that every node on the network keeps track of every transaction in the world. If Graham decides to send me half a Bitcoin, that transaction only clears once it travels to every node around the world and updates their ledger, which is sometimes why it's called a distributed ledger. That makes the network secure, but it's also slow since everything has to constantly ping back and forth across the planet. 
Proof of history solved this problem. It was created in 2017 by Anatoly Yakovenko when he wrote a white paper called, you guessed it, Solana. And it eliminates all the back and forth communication of blockchains by tagging each transaction on the chain with a timestamp to show when the transaction occurred and then determining their correct order after they are received. I've used the analogy before of other chains kind of being like bumper to bumper traffic. You can't move forward until the cars in front of you move and you can't go around since everything would show up in the wrong order. Proof of history is more like a racetrack where every car can see the stoplight and hit the gas at the same time. Yeah, they might cross the finish line in a different order than when they started, but we can always look back at their timestamps and reorganize them into the correct order after they arrive. This means transactions can go through much faster without bottlenecks and the look back process can clean up any out of order transactions. Now I mentioned how this incredible speed advantage made Solana the blockchain of choice for giant crypto exchange FTX and many developers like it as well. Last year Solana's number of developers nearly 5x making them one of the largest crypto developer communities behind only Ethereum and Polkadot and maybe Cosmos. Meanwhile other high growth chains like Terra saw a 4x increase in developers. So even in this fast growing world, Solana still stands out. So let's rank the category of unique features. For first place here, I'm going to give Solana the win. Its proof of history is such a differentiator that it's attracting developers way faster than any community. And that alone is driving more features to be continually added to the network. For number two, I'm going to put Ethereum, although it's a close one. Ethereum has a scale that is unmatched by any of the other developer communities. And even though it's slow moving, it's kind of like an aircraft carrier, inexorably moving forward while smaller ships dart around it. Maybe I can't point to any truly unique technical feature, but the community itself is unique in its passion and size. And following close behind that is Terra. The combination of algorithmic stablecoins with a DeFi-driven ecosystem is super interesting. And if it works out, this coin could be absolutely huge, even bigger than the current largest stablecoin, Tether. It's just not quite enough yet to pass Ethereum. So let's quickly recap who won each category and then put everything together to figure out which crypto is the best overall. For the category of speed, we had Solana, then Terra, then Ethereum. For growth potential, we had Ethereum, then Solana, then Terra. And for unique features, we had Solana, then Ethereum, and then Terra. So I think the ranking here is actually pretty cut and dry. Of these three cryptos, Solana takes first place. It has much higher transactions per second at up to 710,000 versus 30 for Ethereum today and 10,000 for Terra. It has one of the fastest growing crypto developer communities in the world and it's seen increased adoption from other crypto projects looking to take advantage of the lightning fast network. Number two is Ethereum. While the network is currently very slow, there are plans in the future to speed it up dramatically. And as the second largest crypto by market cap, it makes sense to take things slow and steady. But Ethereum still has massive growth potential in front of it as it moves to proof of stake and shard networks over the coming year. And it's absolutely massive development developer community drives continued innovation and even adoption among mainstream enterprise companies. Last up, but still a very cool project is Terra, which combines DeFi with an algorithmic stablecoin. Terra is plenty fast for its users and has a ton of growth potential, but it's held back by operating in a space that has seen many failed projects in the past. And even though its developer community has 4x in size over the last year, when compared to these other two cryptos, which are genuinely the best of the best, Terra just falls slightly behind. Now this is not me predicting which crypto will go up in price. This is just my ranking of Solana versus Terra versus Ethereum as a whole. But let me know if you would change any of these rankings or if you would look at different categories altogether. You can get $25 in free Bitcoin by signing up for Voyager using the link in the description and depositing $100. I know a lot of you have already signed up, but if you haven't, now is as good as time as any to grab some free Bitcoin. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.